Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 89, and today we're going to talk about van dwellers. And uh, in a different way, uh, I had the opportunity to watch a video from Cheap RV Living and he did a interview with some, uh, well, it just happened to be women um, van dwellers, and uh, their perception of full-time RVers and how we perceive RV uh, van dwellers um, are kind of interesting. So I thought it'd be a great discussion topic. So let's talk about van dwellers and how we observe them and how our mindset might be changed. So this ought to be kind of interesting for me because uh, I, I I admit I am an old schooler. Uh, I'm kind of um, the leave it the beaver family kind of lifestyle that I grew up where you go to school, you learn uh, a skill or get a degree and you're and you provide for your family, you buy a house and cars and send your kids to school and pretty much, you know, the old time Americana. And, uh, and that's me. And, and, and uh, I'm not going to uh, be uh, sorry about that. But at the same time, uh, things have changed. For example, like in the old days, you used to try to work for a company for a lifetime and retire from that company. And, um, you know, they provide you a pension and all that kind of things. Well, those days are gone. There's only a few places that you could still have that kind of relationship. Times have changed. And so I'm, I'm kind of putting, uh, <laughs> my cards on the table. So, uh, I can actually be the person that they were referring to in the interview that uh, we have the link to for uh, van dwellers because they actually mentioned how the weekend warriors um, and none of this is bad by the way this is all just discussion how weekend warriors and full timers with the big REs and stuff like that uh, look at van dwellers and so they have a perception of how we see them. And of course, um, we have, you know, um, hard to word everything here without, um, the last thing about this show is not to offend anybody. This is, this is to take a person's mindset like my own, which is kind of like, um, better income. And I've had, I, um, and I'm not divorced or anything like that and kind of been traditional and that's not bragging or anything like that it's just kind of putting here's my foundation and here's what I see and how I observe it and also how I, in some cases I may want to change my mindset and, and maybe this will be helpful for you too to um, look at this differently and and or just the way you've always looked at it. So it's just, and uh, so uh, I also am a father. Uh, my kids are all grown up. And so I have expectations. I want my kids to get an education and provide for their families and have grandkids and, and kind of pass that on in their kind of new generational way of doing things. So that's kind of my foundation of how I'm looking at this. And then I'm going to try to open that door a little more to uh, look beyond my beliefs and uh, or st stretch or modify my beliefs or yours uh, to look at why these people are doing this van dwelling. And uh, I, I can already tell you it's as versatile as it is in RVing. It's not just one answer for it. Um, and these are the things I want to talk about. So 
let's move forward. So one of the main things that I, you know, like I've always wanted my kids and people to have, you know, this is America, so you should have the best of everything in a sense. Um, everybody deserves a, a roof over their head, uh, decent, you know, water and, and, and enough money to pay for food and, and security and all these little things, uh, 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 facilities and uh, utilities and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, once again, it could be old school looking at new type of lifestyles. And so the first thing I start judging <laughs> and is, is, you know, I come from a father like, oh, you don't have a pot to piss in. Um, it's one of those get an education, learn a thing and, and provide for your family and shut up and do your thing. So the first thing I want to do when I see is like, oh my God, these guys are living in vans and pooping in buckets and, and, uh, uh, living a minimalist lifestyle and, and the first, that's the first thing that comes to, uh, to my head and I start judging and it's like oh. well first of all it's like how many things my kids have done already that's so different than when me and Sherry were their age uh, and uh, I've had to open my mind and so the same goes for observing these van dwellers and, and it's not necessarily, and it's not defined as always just vans. There's also people using class C's and things like that, so or trailers. And so, but they keep it very minimal and, and they uh, take advantage of, well, I, I don't want to use the word take advantage, use the resources of BLM land and free places to stay to keep their costs down. And so, um, Let's kind of, from the video that I watched, uh, I the first thing I gathered was the cards that were dealt to people. Um, for example, this happened to be a interview with three women. And, and what was really good about it is they came from all different ages. It was like 40, 50, and 70. And uh, so that was a good span of uh, different scenarios. So... Um, and, and I don't know the full stories of all of them, and, and it's not the important thing, other than it gives you an opportunity to see what cards have been dealt out to people and how people played their best hand. In these cases, I got the impression uh, most of the women were by themselves or single. Um, and I'll talk about guys later, but um, uh, the first thing you can kind of notice is is either they lost their husband or they got divorced um, they're living in a house alone and uh, so you know and you say well some of those things aren't bad I mean and, but you think about there's nothing worse in the world I think is um, other than well there's nothing worse than loneliness and so if I was to lose my spouse like Sherry uh, I probably wouldn't last long after she was gone because I really depend on her. Oh, well, she's my partner. I, I don't depend on her, but um, she's one half of me. We are, you know, I consider us one. So losing half of my, you know, 50% of my soul would just kill me. And so if I was sitting in a house by myself every day after that kind of loss, uh, and it could feel that way even with a divorce or, or whatever. Like I said, whatever the cards are dealt to you, um, that can really be depressing. And so I get the impression uh, some people say, I got to get out of this funk. And, and uh, I'm, I'm single now. Or I'm not happy. I'm scared. Or um, life is empty. Um, I need to modify this lifestyle. And so I picked up on a little bit of that in this video I'm, t I'm referring to. And I have a link to this video on this description. Uh, and it was produced by CheapRVLiving.com. Uh, I think it's .com. But anyway, that's the name of his channel. And please go visit it. And uh, please remember, and if you watch uh, their other videos, it's all about van dwelling. And so it's a lifestyle I don't think I would be happy doing because um, 
but maybe I could change my ways. Maybe I'll feel different later. Maybe if I was single or something like that, and uh, and, it, and and no, by the way, don't get the idea that you have to be single to do this. There's couples doing this too. Um, and then there's, of course, the, from van dwellers up to just being full timers, um, um, enjoying um, traveling. And then there's just the weekend warriors. And there's all these different categories. And so they referred to you know weekend warriors in the video and how weekend warriors look at van dwellers and then how van dwellers look at weekend warriors. And so it was kind of interesting and kind of like made me <laughs> want to make a radio show about it. And so I'm going to say things that might be, I don't mean to be offensive. It's just a mindset that I've had and other people have that come out during um, this kind of stuff. And that's why we should have shows like this. It's a talk radio. And we're talking about RV lifestyles. And that's what our show's all about, RV lifestyles. And uh, we don't talk about van dwellers enough other than criticize them. And, and on our show, at least, uh, uh, and it's because of the mindset of of growing up as is. Um, having the model of trying to have careers and and families and structure and and so that's my paradigm that I uh, uh, need to do a shift and so I'm trying to also give people like you that are listening to the show to do a paradigm shift to understand these uh, van dwelling. Um, craze you might say that's out there I don't know if it's even a craze but lifestyle and try to understand them and maybe even try to watch like uh, watch uh, watching cheap RV living um, dot com or <laughs> I don't know if it's a dot com I'll check um, is a great example uh, he talks to a lot of other people other than themselves to uh, pass on um, different ways of living like this and and different uh, attitudes and people um, and how, even why they even became van dwellers and uh, uh, I think uh, I think a show like this will help everyone so let's um, talk a little bit more about that one of the main things I kind of got out of uh, the group um, video I was watching there is is they're not alone and 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 there's a lot of people who, like think about doing this and they're scared and so they put emphasis on being a team or being a family and um, where you can meet other van dwellers and see if this is, if it's a lifestyle that would help you. So think about, let's say you lose your spouse and let's say you're in a house, empty house and every day um, drags on and it's another, oh, got to pay the bills, I'm alone, every little sound uh you don't feel safe. Um, you're just not happy. You're in a dark, gray lifestyle, um, and I can see how easily that can easily happen. That's, I'm just using one example, and so you stumble upon on the internet uh, van dwelling, and whether you're a woman or a woman or a man, um, and uh, you say, you know, that's something I want to maybe explore, maybe. I'll just do it for, you know, uh, keep my house, but just escape for a week. And so they provide like rendezvous and, and uh, opportunities to meet other people like that to see if these are kind of people are like you or are they uh, embracing kind of people. How does my soul feel, my spirit of uh, once I've gone out and I've uh, maybe I'll just rent a van or maybe I'll just... Uh, uh, take a tent or whatever I need to do this the first time and meet up and, and these people have got these channels and websites where you can contact them and, and dialogue with them and maybe even meet up with them and so you don't have to just dive in and take the challenge you can actually see if it's a lifestyle that would fit you and and then you have to ask yourself how do I feel and that's really what it's all about how do I feel about life? How do I feel about now I have contact with other people? Now I'm in a community. Now I'm not alone. Uh, now I actually feel safe, safety in numbers. Um, 
I can see things. I'm observing new things. I'm, my senses are starting to uh, be stimulated. Uh, what's wrong with that? Not a damn thing, <laughs> tell you the truth. <laughs> and so, is it a you know glory? You know, it's not a glorious lifestyle. It's a freedom lifestyle. But yeah, at the same time, you're giving up a lot of amenities that you may have uh, in in the past, or even to do it full time. But the bottom line is, how do you feel, and are you happy? And that's the biggest thing right there. And of course, there's economic reasons to talk about this. So um, let's talk about that a little bit. One of the uh, comments they made in this video was, uh, um, and, and I think I kind of touched on that, is uh, so many people are alone or don't feel complete or not happy or depressed. And they feel like a bud or a flower. You know, you're looking at a rose, let's say, and you're just a rose bud. And uh, you're all packed inside really tight and you're afraid to bloom because you don't, it's a new world, something different. And uh, that's one of the things they refer to in, uh, in the video of, of um, van dwelling. And I'm sure it applies to full-timer RV or people too, but I'm going to try to stay with the van folks because it's an area I don't understand that well. Um, has saved some people's lives uh, spiritually um, to get out of depression, to get out of loneliness, to explore the world, to be in a community with others. Um, that's really important. People need people. Um, yeah, there's exceptions to that, but it's really interesting to hear this interview and you can kind of tell that at least the three women in this particular interview, and I'm going to look, you know, talk about some of the other videos too, but, uh, I want to kind of make this the base video for everybody to go see, um, that, you know, and they talk about security and things like that. Well, they actually feel more secure in the community of van dwelling in, in, in their community than they did at their own homes uh, in a, a rural kind of lifestyle. And so, uh, uh, yeah, there's um, a lot to take in. Um, and, and I know materialistically <laughs> speaking, um, there's a chances of us looking at like why would you give up all that and why would you live so rough why would you not want the amenities that all of us have in our houses and utilities and and resources uh why would you want to give all that up and, and at the same time what do you gain well that's what you really don't talk about is yeah they're giving up a, a, a regular flush toilet and I know I'm obsessed with that. Huh? <laughs> My days of buckets are gone, <laughs> at least for now. And uh, uh, but they're gaining freedom. They're gain, uh, uh, getting more in touch with uh, the land. Uh, going outside, for God's sakes, um, that's you know. There's a lot of people that just never go outside and just sit down and listen to a bird or see a critter. Uh, see a blue sky, enjoy a monsoon, uh, to see lightning, to uh, um, enjoy uh, the magical earth of no matter where you go, whether you're in desert or whether you're in uh, the woods or whatever uh, you're at, evergreen states, um, it's amazing when you really get outside and sit and, and be out in it for hours. Um, and no, I'm not saying that Van Duel is always outside or indoors too. But um, how much you miss. Uh, just in my yard alone, uh, I don't realize that I have a major traffic problem of rabbits. And, um, and, and unless I actually go outside and sit down and realize that I have, even though I'm in an urban area, I have more critters in my yard than I think I've had in places where I had acreage. Uh, I've got, you know, quails. Uh, visiting my property, little bunnies running through it, 
uh, it's just uh, amazing. And then these uh, the bird sounds and things. So I really make it a rule to try to go outside, even though I am urban living. Uh, but I've been a full-time RVer too, so I know the sights and sounds are important to me. So I literally will just walk outside and sit outside for hours uh, just because I don't want to get out of touch with the earth. And so uh, you can kind of tell in all these interviews and all these people talking that they're uh, getting in touch with their spirit. And, uh, uh, you know, if you're not happy and you're not feeling good, um, then what's the use of living in a house and and having all the amenities if you wake up every day and say, is this it? So one of the things I kind of skipped a little bit was the economic reasons to do this. So a lot of people say, well, you know, um, if you got, you know, jobs and careers and things like that, well, that's not the cards that get dealt to a lot of folks. Let's say you um, have lost your spouse or maybe you're on a fixed income. Maybe you're only getting social security or a disability. Uh, some people might be lucky enough to have a pension from their company. Maybe their husband was the one that had the pension and they get like 50% of that pension because they passed away, but they still get a benefit and maybe they get some support from social security. Still, it's, um, they're not large numbers. They're uh, practical. I mean, uh, at least we have something. Um, and so, trying to main if you're a single woman let's say uh and it can happen to a single guy too uh because uh, you know uh, women are major breadwinners now sherry is in our family and so don't please don't think uh, i take one side or the other one being better or the other and one makes more income than the other my wife is really our our primary breadwinner now uh, i have a pension and i'm grateful for that um anyway so uh, you can't be very happy in a house and, and, and be drained of every penny you got to maintain that house. And, and, and then Lord knows if you have something you have to fix or whatever. So one of the big things I've noticed with these women kept talking about is the economical, uh, reason why they did it. Uh, and then the other thing is, uh, you know, so easy to sit back and, and, and judge and stuff. But the best thing to do is go try it. And one gal referred to is like, I just grabbed a, my vehicle and I grabbed some clothes and, and a few practicalities. I didn't even bring anything I could cook with and literally um, went out and just made sandwiches and, and gave it a try. And uh, so, you know, uh, you can utilize free camping and 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 as long as you have the fact that you can be a little mobile um and reduce your overhead significantly and and still live a full lifestyle uh, a and live this community and live this freedom of not having every penny you make or have taken away from you just to maintain a house and and, and the insurance for that house and repairs and utilities and television shows um, or cables and and all these things that just nickel and dime you and Lord knows like here in Arizona your air conditioner goes out or um, last show I was telling you my our pool pump went out and it's like it's just constantly uh, writing a check and giving up my money and so at the end of the day it's like uh, we got to stay home we don't have any money <laughs> and uh, uh, so the economic reasons to do this and still live a full life uh, makes sense. And, and if you have to go just to the van living uh, lifestyle uh, works for you, great. If you need to step it up a little more, go with a Class C type thing. And if you like to go even a little farther, a bigger trailer or maybe a fifth wheel. And then uh, obviously there's folks that go out there with uh, Class A's and live a um uh, try to live a very minimalist lifestyle, but at the same time having a sense of community, enjoying the resources around them, um, enjoying nature, and uh, fulfilling their life uh, with wholeness. Um, and and and. Uh, but once again, I want to stay more with the van dwellers. 
And uh, maybe it's a rebelish way of living. I guess some of us might look at it that way. It's like, well, they're just getting off the grid and they're trying to beat the system. Well, uh, uh, you know, of course, everything I stand for is everything on the grid. And so uh, I got a taste of both sides of it. And there's times that here I'm on the grid and uh, I, I, I get the urge of I just want to escape. And uh, I'm tired of uh, problems I've got to fix and, and, and you know, uh, items breaking and, and uh, having to maintain a house and, and have all the stuff that I got to uh, uh, take care of. Um, that gets old after a while. And occasionally, you know, and I always tell people on, on our show that once you are a traveler, um, and that's why I worry about the young people traveling so soon because it gets in your blood. And once you've had a taste of it and you enjoy it, you can't forget about it. I don't know how many times I was a manager at the aerospace company that I worked at that I'd be just staring out the window sometimes in my office and I'd just think about because I was I actually had a chance of full-time RV before I had to go back into that aerospace company and I'd just daydream about all the wonderful adventures I had and I couldn't do anymore. And... Uh, uh, so uh, I definitely understand that feeling, but I, I always worry, like I said, about young f folks doing it. Once it gets in your blood, it, ma it makes you uh, an oddball. <laughs> when you're not part of that regime anymore of going nine to five and, and, and you notice it and the people around you think you're nuts because you constantly want to go somewhere or take time off to go uh, do an adventure where... Uh, uh, the rest of them will say, well, why can't you succumb to the uh, lifestyle of nine to five every day? And it says, because it's in your blood. So after I uh, watched a few more of the Van Dwellers uh, videos from Cheap RV Living, um, one of the things I've heard the words a couple of times is to come out and heal. And so that's kind of an interesting uh, like, and we kind of talked about that a little earlier in this show, is um, some folks get so caught up in the rat race uh, between, you know, nine to five jobs, uh, family, um, family issues, um, responsibilities, that gets crazy, and to a point where you're just walking around like an insane crazy person. And... The observation I've gotten from some of these folks of going that they just didn't like themselves. They had no motivation. They weren't happy. Once again, it comes down to feelings and health and happiness. And so once they had the guts to try van dwelling or, or living in a small trailer or something like that and getting set up and, 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 um, Getting out there, um, it started to spark their life. Uh, the spark start, started coming back. Um, the other thing I noticed is uh, these people uh, either started becoming very good at managing money and saving money, or once they got into the van lifestyle or trailers or RVs, uh, that they learned how to manage money better by paying for cash, saving money, um, to budget themselves properly, to live a great lifestyle without the stress of, of debt, and uh, which can drive people crazy is um, with a house and visa. You know, when you have a house and, and you're paying for all that stuff and things break, you tend to use credit cards and things like that to get things fixed and all that. And pretty soon you're, you're so deep in it, you just you, you, you just want to crawl up into a corner and just scream and it's just like, I give up. And so uh, I, you know, time and time again, I keep seeing this... Uh, this uh, escape this uh, uh, health reason um, to uh, to do this kind of lifestyle and so who I guess the big thing is is trying to look at these people uh, maybe talk to them more and and get their stories and it's and it's different uh, it's different for all of them but a lot of them have some commonalities 
and one is health and happiness and feeling good and getting their lives under control uh it can uh, i mean i can't tell you enough like in the six months that sherry and i bought a house um it was rolling along pretty good and all of a sudden it seemed like a week and a half we just got bombarded with issues and so sometimes you're just like why did we do this again um but uh, we have it kind of in perspective of if it gets to be too much we can actually step back again because um, we know what to do uh, but one thing another thing that's really good about RVing or full timing is the fact that you learn all these new things like being a minimalist budgeting your money um, planning things like that that if you enter back into the urban lifestyle you'll actually be better at it because you've learned how to manage money you've learned how to be happy you realize you can't let certain things control you otherwise you just go totally insane so another observation I wanted to bring up I've noticed with um, van dwellers or people who are living a minimalized life is um, there's and you, when you go down our description I have links to other videos that I, I, I want you to take the time to watch if you get a chance um, there's a one gal who bought a, uh, uh, a trailer for 2500 bucks and she was uh, actually living in Mexico for a long time and had a chance to appreciate the Mexican people that uh, a lot of them are considered poverty as far as you know uh, American standards uh, yet live a very happy and wonderful and joyous lifestyle because it wasn't the um, uh, nobody was keeping up with the Joneses you might say um, they were not into the materialistic things that they own they were into their the joy of themselves uh, appreciating themselves as a person and 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 so uh, well, the way she describes the Mexican people that live like this there's they're you know they took good care of themselves they always look good they enjoyed one another but all of them were basically poverty uh, level um, uh, sticks and bricks kind of very basic homes and stuff yet they're very proud people and happy people and living a very full life even though they didn't have a lot of materialistic things and so uh, transferring that into what we're talking about here with van dwelling is it isn't all about what you own and what you have uh, as it is the quality of your life and also uh, the big thing I've noticed in almost all the videos is um, a uh, connection with nature and being very healing and uh, there's other videos if you get a chance to go through stuff uh, where uh, I'm gonna link one more video that pertains to someone with disabilities uh, that can be very depressing where you can't work anymore um, or uh, have a hard time uh, uh, holding you, know, you might be able to do part-time jobs and things like that but um, your your life can get very depressing because you can't contribute the way you want to and live the lifestyle you want so the best way is do it to do it is try to reduce that overhead and start focusing on your life and being happy and being in a community and and being around other people uh, that will uh, fill your heart and fill your soul I think another thing to observe is 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 people um, many people have gone for the American dream let's say you buy a house and you uh, invest in a way maybe you uh, do double payments you get a uh, your house paid off early and uh, maybe you started a, a good investment 401k and you did everything right and then the world turns on you with a medical crisis or death or, or something and and then find yourself that you've done all these years of doing what quote unquote the right thing the American dream and then find yourself with nothing at the end um, not necessarily your own fault or maybe you had a business that uh, crashed and burned and there's nothing wrong with that I mean uh, I always commend somebody that's try it a business and even if it failed uh, at least they had the guts to try it 
and uh, a lot of cases that can uh, be uh, ruthless to your savings and to your investments and things like that. So um, a lot of people are, uh, well, even uh, during the recession, uh, a lot of people lost their houses and got wiped out. Uh, people in their 50s lost their jobs. Hard to find jobs when you're older. And uh, uh, anyway, you just never know what cards are going to get dealt to you. So uh, one thing I've found uh, uh, is a lot of the van dwellers uh, really uh, appreciate this gentleman that uh, owns a cheap RV living as a resource to meet up with to, if they were to consider this lifestyle, uh, have someone to lean on to uh, uh, be advised and, and, and given resources to get started. And uh, uh, and when you talk about resources uh, like a van uh, dwelling uh, you may want to know what kind of equipment to use and maybe you're uh, using solar uh, these people come together and and uh, help each other to get each one on the road and comfortable and safe and that's a wonderful community and and I gotta uh, tip my hat to that um, is that a lifestyle that I do right now because <laughs> I'm you might say on top of the world I, the American dreams working for us that could change in a heartbeat um, we could have a medical disaster we could uh, um, you just never know uh, what could happen and everything that you've done right all these years could just go poof and so who are we to judge these people um, uh, if they're living healthy lifestyles uh, the big thing I always concern myself with is are they law-abiding um, and and are they following the rules properly? If they're happy and they're not hurting anybody, they're using uh, uh, what things they are doing are legal, you might say, as far as business and paying taxes and things like that. Uh, I don't. I certainly would not have an issue with any of them. Um, I get a little concerned, and you've heard in my uh, shows before the ones that take this van life uh, or uh, nomadic lifestyle I'll say more uh, and and turn it into a uh, e-begging show uh, that concerns me a bit but the people I'm seeing and in, in these interviews with uh, cheap RV living is uh, are people that are using the resources they have left you might say or are uh, s still have after divorces or after a death in the family or disability uh, things and finding a way to live a happy and normal lifestyle to them based off of the resources that they're receiving and then uh, some of them are still doing businesses uh, uh, like one of the links I put in our description of a gal that you know, came up from Mexico is doing uh, accounting uh, online and supporting um, uh, herself and in making income uh, that way to and keeping the overhead so low that they can um, make ends meet and, and live a comfortable lifestyle and be able to you know feed themselves take care of themselves uh, have shelter and and still be happy and free and and, and one with nature and uh, living uh, minimalist living and so uh, I don't know. I I think it's uh, I I found myself quite ju judgmental occasionally, of uh, just a s quickly assuming a, a van dweller is just a um, a gypsy type thing. Where uh, really sometimes it's a fundamental way of living uh, a full life with minimal resources. And so I highly recommend that. Um, especially or at least through cheap RV or, uh, living .com, I've noticed uh, um, you're, you're seeing the real people and and they're, and they're not necessarily doing blogs and, and videos uh, they're just living life and then this gentleman I think his name's Bob uh, comes in and actually interviews them um, and, and to give us an idea of what what's really out there so you're not seeing the famous videos from them um, and they're not getting in anybody's way, and they're not hurting anybody. Um, they're using the resources that, uh, luckily, in the United States we have, like uh, free places to camp and 
and uh, resources to support that, um, there's a way to uh, have, live this life and still um, be comfortable and, and, and being able to provide for themselves. And that's really what we want. We're not, you know, I, a lot of us don't like to see people taking advantage of welfare and food stamps and things like that. These people are not. Um, these people, now there's exceptions to the rule, but uh, these people are, are learning how to live uh, a full life with the resources they have or the cards that have been dealt to them. And, and, and that's important to note in this whole thing. And that's really what, uh, to me, what bothers me is people e-bagging and, and, and people uh, using government resources all the time and thinking that they're entitled. And what I'm seeing here is not entitled people. I'm seeing resourceful people. And, and that's important. So there you go, guys. <laughs> Rob's not as cranky as you thought he was, huh? Anyway, so I hope this show uh, opens your mind a little bit. And when you get an opportunity to meet one of these people that are van dwelling, uh, you, first of all, you'll find a, a, a different story for each one of them. And some of them will have some of these things that are, I feel are negative, but. Uh, uh, all in all, uh, I think the most important thing I want to get out of this is the one thing that bothers me the most is people that are entitled and think the world owes them something. And, and when you meet these people that are going out here and living with the resources they have, uh, whether uh, young, middle-aged, or older, and, and making it work, then that's commendable. Uh, that's what makes a person a good person is learning how to live with the resources you have and not being a burden to society. Uh, I think all of us try to achieve that. Now there's exceptions to every role and you, you know, I'll point that stuff out. And, um, once again, I, I really get a little uh, perturbed about all of these ones pushing, books and, and links and, and um, uh, affiliate links and uh, e-bagging and Patreon and all that stuff. Um, what I'm seeing from at least the shows I was watching based off of uh, Cheap RV Living are people using the resources that one, if they're entitled to anything like disabilities, um, that's from you know illnesses, whether uh, physical or mental. Um, and it's usually not a whole lot of money, and yet they're finding a way to make ends meet with those numbers. And that's good. That's a good thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, for those that I uh, I still speak about of, of uh, being nomadic and also I feel like sometimes almost uh, scamming kind of things, uh, I'll, I'll always have a little... Uh, negativity towards that and I it's just me and I, I apologize but I also want to make sure that you know I don't talk about this lifestyle that often because I haven't lived it uh, I've had things close to it um, and uh, the other obvious thing is as I don't have the freedom or the time that I wish I had to sit down for uh, hours at, at a time to interview these people and find out uh, what their lives are like and how they got into this lifestyle. So um, the gentleman who made these videos is living that lifestyle and is able to sit down and listen to people's stories and their uh, experiences uh, to uh, find out how they got there. And I'm sure that he's ran into people that kind of wish that this is not the stereo you know uh, uh, the the stereotype that we may have in our heads about these this kind of lifestyle uh there's a handful of those and those t tend to be the squeaky wheels and so it makes it look bad um and what i'm trying to do with this show is get rid of the stereotype of van dwelling and yeah i make fun of people like i don't want to go through life li uh, having a crap in a, bu um, <laughs> a bucket <laughs> sorry 
<laughs> but you know, um, you take another way of looking at it is is um, what the heck's the difference? <laughs> so it's a bucket. Um, as long as uh, um, they're following the rules, they're being sanitary, or uh, how they do their showers and how they do solar and all that stuff. As long as they're following the rules and the laws and and they're being uh, resourceful and and living with their, within their means, that's probably the other thing I haven't said enough. These people are living within their means, and they're not entitled. Those are great people. What else could we ask for? Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show and uh, my uh, um, van dwelling observations. Uh, I, I, I kind of hope to do more shows like this in the future. Uh, I hope any misconceptions that you may have had of us about what we thought about that kind of stuff has uh, hopefully been changed a little bit. And uh, I want to personally thank uh, the owner of uh, Cheap RV Living and his channel. Uh, he's definitely opened my eyes and I'm sure he's opened other people's eyes um, to the lifestyle and trying to explain why people are done are doing this or have done this or how to come into this lifestyle safely and that's really important and some people have really embraced him and he's really embraced others so uh, uh, you know his lifestyle my lifestyle totally different people different uh, experiences uh, I re hopefully um, we did a respectable job of, of uh, uh, how we observed his channel and I hope that he has appreciation for our presentation towards them. Uh, I, I want you to remind you that in the description I've linked uh, four major videos that I thought were very uh, educational and very eye-opening uh, and also uh, the empowerment of women. Uh, he's done a very good job at doing uh, interviews to represent um, not only uh, male and females and couples uh, he's just very uh, good and then and at the same time he's also done some great presentations about resources of how to make the lifestyle easier to live and 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 going through rules and regulations so once again I want to thank you for listening to our show I want to thank uh, the cheap RV living folks for great uh, material that you've shared with everybody and I wish everybody out there in the RV lifestyle and van dwelling uh, safe and happy trails. I'm Rob Scribner, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye now.